family what's good it's your boy we're back with yet another video greetings and welcome thank you for tuning to the channel suits and sense okay family today's video is going to be entitled see how can i put this fragrances that are geared toward women but are strong enough for a man to rock at least I wear okay all the phrases I've been using you know that some of them are made for women but I still rock them because I like the way that they're composed that's how uh that's just how it is today you know there's a few that are that I have that are like that geared for the woman geared completely for the women but still strong enough for a man how that commercial go uh soft for a woman but strong enough for a man I don't know if I said it right now but you get the idea what I'm talking about Okay, first time viewers, thank you for tuning to the channel, Suits and Scents. Truly appreciate it. Um, I continue viewers, much love, much love, much love. Truly appreciate your family. First time viewers, before you make any decisions, go back, check out some of the previous videos from Suits and Scents. All right, make a judgment from there. Um, even if you don't make any decisions, at least hit the like button for me, hit the bell notification because I'm always going to drop videos. Try to be entertaining, try to be informative, and we have fun. Something that we that I enjoy doing. Okay. All right. So we're gonna get to this video. Fragrances that are geared toward women, but strong enough for a man. All right. Let the intro roll. I'm gonna come back with the first one. All right, family. First, going to the house of Clive Christian, and it is green floral, green floral with Scottish heather. Now, okay, yeah, this is a woman's fragrance. Clive Christian designed it for the woman. It's, it's sold, it's, it's marketed, everything for the woman. But I still rock it. I wear this. Now, I don't wear it abundantly, but I wear it. Okay. And the reason why is because I love the, uh, the apple, the pear, the rose, um, and, and has, uh, now, now I've never heard of a note called dewdrop, dewdrop and some, uh, grass notes, the fruit with the grass and whatever dewdrop is absolutely beautiful. I love this fragrance. Now the rose the rose that's in here is 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 not a sweet well i ain't gonna say it's not sweet but it's not too sweet let's put it that way mixed with that that grass note and the uh fruit of court man yeah it uh, this the dew drop in the grass note adds the masculinity to it to my nose and that's what brings it out all right um green floor by uh clive christian Came out in 2017, I believe. Um, it's going to run you to high threes, low fours. If you haven't smelled it, check it out. Check it out. Really good scent. That's uh, Green Floor, Clive Christian. Let's get to the next one. All right, family. The next house we're going to is the house of Mancera and it's Musky Gardens. Now, <sighs> with this one, it got a, a nice little rose accord to it. Even got a little flower on the front. So the bottle, of course, is geared toward the woman. The marketing is geared toward the woman. Everything is geared toward the woman. But it uh, has a uh, cranberry, white peach, and some citrus notes in there. So there go your fruit accord. You know, add a little fruit to it. Then you got uh, the Bulgarian rose, fruit and rose, feminine notes, right? Uh, got raspberry, blackberry. But then you got some patchouli leaf and some white musk and a little bit of amber. That goes the masculinity. That's where our man can rock it. All right. All those feminine notes come out in the beginning, but the masculine, the masculine notes come in there just to tone everything down where a man can still rock it. Yes, yeah, a feminine. It's a feminine fragrance. I give him that. But, you know, if you in touch with your inner self and, you know, you cool with it, rock it because I do. I rock this like a book and get mad compliments. I'm telling you, it's a winner. All right. 
Um, came out 2017. This should be psh, no more than maybe 100, 120, something like that. Shouldn't be that uh, expensive at all. That's Musky God from the House of Man, sir. Let's get to the next one. All right, family. Next, we're going to the House of Tom Ford, and it's Plum Japanese. Now, this came out in 2000, 2013. Now, it's discontinued. So I can't give you a true price point on it because if you do purchase somewhere, you're going to pay way over market value just on the simple fact that it's discontinued. Not saying that it's not a good fragrance. It's an excellent fragrance geared toward the woman, marketed for the woman, uh, and it's labeled for women. But beautiful scent. Beautiful, beautiful scent. You know, it got the uh, Japanese plum in here, uh, some floral notes in here. Um, some cinnamon, some saffron, some vanilla, but it also has agarwood and amber. All right. There goes the masculinity. I'm telling you, there goes the masculinity. It's geared for a woman. It's a woman fragrance, but a man can rock this. I rock it all the time. Plum Japanese. It's, it's a woman fragrance, like I stated, but a man can rock it. You can, a man, you can get away with this. You can. I do all the time. Mad compliments, mad, mad compliments. The agarwood and the, and the uh, amber adds the masculinity to it. Boom, done deal. You're not walking around smelling feminine. I mean, it's a feminine scent, but you're not walking around smelling feminine. You, you, you're good to go. All right, let's get to the next one. Okay, family, next we're going to the house of Nisha Ney, and it's 100 Solid Ways. Okay, 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 okay. Now, this one... It's considered a unisex scent. It is. But to me, it tends to lead toward femininity a little bit more. Leads to lead toward the women. Just a tad bit more to me. It leans towards the women. It does. Not saying that's not a good scent. Not saying, fellas, that you can't rock it because you can. I rock it all the time and get mad compliments. Mad, mad compliments, I'm trying to tell you. Uh, this came out in 2018. I don't know. I'm not, uh, I think 18. If I'm incorrect, then, you know, forgive me. Price point, this should run you probably like the mid 100s, the maybe up to two, if that shouldn't be that much, um, no more than that. Again, Lee's Feminine, you got the vanilla, you got the tuberose, you got the peach, you got the mandarin, gardenia, jasmine, all those feminine notes. The fruit accord, the floral accord, right? And you got uh, the vanilla. The vanilla in here and the sandalwood really pushes it over the edge toward the uh, feminine side. It really does. The vetiver that's in here adds a tad bit of masculinity to it. Not a lot, but a tad bit of masculinity to it. Now, I would say that 100 Silent Ways is not as feminine as the previous fragrances, but still, to my nose, Lead a little toward the woman, just a little bit, but still a good scent. Still, you can still rock and get mad compliments. Truly can. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, fam. For the next one, it's going to be somewhat of a tie. We're going to the house of Tiziana, Tiziana Terenzi, and it's Kirke, and also to the house of Zherzhov, <clears throat> and it's La Capitale. Both of these are fruit. Uh, fruit baskets. Okay. Now this, this I'm, a, I'm just going to put this, put these two fragrances and describe them like this in the opening, all feminine, all feminine, no masculinity whatsoever. None, nada. In the opening, when you spray it, I'll put it like this. When you first spray it on you, stay in the house for a little bit, then wait for it to dry down some, then go out. That's when the masculinity comes. The masculinity comes on the dry down. In the opening with Kirke and the Capitale, it's all feminine. All feminine. All you get is fruit, fruit, fruit. Sweet fruit at that. Okay? Sweet, exotic fruits. That's what you're getting. But when it dries down, ooh, beautiful. Now with the Capitale, I would not overspray. Don't overspray with this because it's potent and it can become a nuisance. Okay. It can become a nuisance. Matter of fact, it will become a nuisance if you overspray with this. Don't need a lot. Let it settle down a little bit, then head out. Beautiful scent. You know, an opening, all feminine, 
completely all feminine, but they still monster sense. You will love them. Okay. All right. Let's uh, move along. Get to the next one. <sighs> all right, family. Next, we're going to the house of Byron Parfums and it's Mula Mula Extreme. Now, listen. <sighs> mm. Okay. With this fragrance here in the opening, well, let's, let's, it came out in, shoot, 2017, I think. And the price point gonna run you the mid twos to the high twos, somewhere like that, between 250 to 90, something like that, okay? Strawberry, cherry, raspberry. That's the opening. And it's there heavily, heavily. When you first spray it, it is there heavily. And yet I say again, heavily. Then you got uh, caramel and rose bay willow herb. Now, I can't say that that note is sweet or masculine. I think it tends to lead, lead, lead toward the feminine side because it's a floral. That caramel, like I said, that caramel coming in, boom, that did it right there. And then you got uh, vanilla, the caramel, the vanilla, those uh, fruit accords, boom, masculine scent. But to add the masculinity, you got some ooh and some patchouli to come in there. All right. But it, it, it puts up a, a, a fight, you know, on the dry down a little bit. But then it starts to, you know, give way to the, the, the fruit accord, the floral accords, And then the sandalwood comes in there and they just overtake it. But they don't overtake it to where you walk around smelling like fruit or, and caramel and vanilla all day. No, they still hold its ground and get peaks in there and it controls it a little bit. But feminine scent. Strong enough for a man to rock. Really can House of Byron. All right, I right, just get to the last one. All right, family. Last fragrance going uh, to the House of Zerzhov, and it's Asento. Now, with <laughs> with this, okay. All right, I wouldn't say that this is a completely feminine scent, but if you had to choose between masculinity and feminine, you, well, I would lead toward feminine. I really would. So I would say it's a feminine scent. But it, this is truly strong enough for a man to rock. It truly is. You got the pineapple, the, ja the jasmine, the iris. So you got a little sweet fruit um, with the floral going on in the opening. And it, it's, it's, it's there and it sticks around. You know, in the opening, the fragrance try to die down a little bit. But no, it, it sticks around there a little bit. Then they add some vanilla to it. But. To, to add some uh some 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 muscle to it they bring in some amber some uh some musk some uh vetiver and then to tone everything down to kick the patchouli in there and that's what keeps it from going completely feminine so it's Asento from uh the house of Giorgio. now this should run you no more than maybe well for this size probably be the low twos and um this when did this come out i'm, I'm slipping on my dates for these fragrances today but Still uh, a fragrance that's lead toward the women, but strong enough for a man. Okay. Those are my fragrances for the day, family. Um, first time viewers, thank you for tuning into the channel, Suits and Sense. I truly appreciate it. Continue viewers, much, much love. Not gonna stay on long. So all we're gonna do is talk about some fragrances that lead feminine, strong enough for a man. And you know, you let me know what you think. If you think some of them are too feminine for you. Or if some of them are just right, or you don't think that they're feminine at all. But hey, who's to say? Okay. All right, fam. Uh, can't stop, won't stop, not going to stop. Truly appreciate you. To the next video. Deuces.